All right, hey, dude. To free the trapped one, the moon must appear before the first star. The sun rises next, after which come two more stars. Does that help? I think so. So, moon star, sun star, star. Okay. <laughs> we gently tapped the guy's chest. He had a heart attack and died. Hmm. A star, a moon, and a sun switch. Wonder what we need those for. It's a jail cell. Eek! Someone get me out of here! There, it looks like there's a rat trapped in there? A rat with a miner helmet? I don't know how why you're a political prisoner in the Mayan Empire, but it's okay. <laughs> Apparently that guy doesn't even care if we're made of solid rock. He's a cool oh, delicious. <laughs> no, 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 no. Also, that's the last warp pad of the world, is right there. Alright, are we heavy enough to push these? Alright, so moon happens first, then the star. Followed by the sun, and then two more stars. And this code actually is random each time you start a new folder. So you will have to talk to that stony every time regardless. And there we go! We entered the sacred code! So now we can go inside and talk to this lady. Oh, my little rabbit friend! Eek! Me, Duberta! Was out looking for gold when that boulder fell down and trapped me in here! I suppose you expect us to move it? If you wouldn't mind. So there's a boulder in this room. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Apparently that's where she came from, and then the boulder dropped over the entrance. We can't destroy that. We've destroyed one boulder on this level with the Golden Goliath, but the Golden Goliath is too big to enter this cell, so we can't destroy it. We would need to find another way to do it, which we do not have yet. Anyhow. So now we have the world entry and exit outside Mumble Skull near Wumba's Wigwam and the Kickball Stadium Lobby. We're gonna go back to Wumba's Wigwam. So that way we can change back. Because I don't want to be a stony no more. These steps were not made for stonies. This is supposed to be like the stony civilization, right? So why are all the steps so big that they have to like jump over them? Good to be back in my body again. This Wamba magic not need global next time. Bear change for free. Cool. And spoiler alert, we might need to become a stony again in the future. Alright. It's good to be Banjo again. Um uh, let's go back to the prison compound. <laughs> which is the place we were just in. of water here and a tunnel down here. If we swim through it, there's another area back here. Like I've said, the world think about how big this world is in comparison to Mumbo's Mountain, the first world of the first game, and yeah, you get an idea of how big the worlds are gonna be. And my home temple is a small world in this game. Some of the worlds are utterly massive, which again I kinda like. So there's another boulder here, but again we can't take Golden Goliath over here to destroy it for us. So we're out of luck. Going into first person mode, there are all these uh, pillars around here. One of the pillars actually has a jiggy on top of it. Yep, you can barely see it, but it's up there. There's also a Cheeto page up there. That's interesting. Now, it actually is possible to get this jiggy right now. The game doesn't want you to. But if you do a really precise do, uh, jump flutter plus a ground pound, you can get just enough height and distance to get up there. That's a sequence break, though. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to come back once we have the ability to destroy the boulder, which we will do. That is one thing that, about Banjo-Tooie. There is quite a bit of backtracking in this, but the backtracking is not, like, bad. It's not like, no, you have to walk all the way back here to do this, you later, doop -a doop doop Like, generally, if you have to backtrack, you've got teleporters that let you do it pretty quickly. And for the most part, the backtracking's actually pretty cool. More on that in the future, but... I'll just say this one really cool thing about Banjo-Tooie that I love is that the worlds are interconnected. And we're gonna see that in this world. 
just a short bit. But, for starter, for now we have to keep exploring this area. WARNING! TRESPASSERS IN THE QUICKSAND ARE LIABLE TO BE EATEN! I don't know what the weird green feed is called, but it's not friendly. <laughs> Alright. There's a Jiggy at the other end of that quicksand, but we can't take Golden Goliath across this one, so we'll have to find something else. So, we can grab onto this with the Grip Grab and shimmy jimmy our way across. Watch out for Snapdragons. Whenever you're shimming along this, always just have your finger on the B button, just in case a Snapdragon appears. Because sometimes their beehives are in a place where it's hard to see them. Thanks, camera. So this will take us uh, to the top. We can go for this cavern here, and then bada beam, bada boom. Another Cheeto page. Yeah, you can get a better view of the Jiggy from here. Again, it is possible to get it right now, but the game doesn't want to. There are quite a few Jiggies that you can... I'll say cheese. You can get it earlier than you're supposed to via sequence breaking. It's hard for me to tell how many of the sequence breaks were actually intended by the developers. I feel like at least a couple of them were. But there are actually uh, quite a few where you can actually get them early. Maybe I'll do like bonus videos showing off like <laughs> how to sequence break some of the jiggies. But it is cool. I like, I like games that have like you can get stuff early, you're not supposed to, and you're not, like, required to, but it's there if you want. It's always fun. And hey, speaking of... <laughs> look at what we've got here from the first game. It's the Waiting Step Boots. We can use these to get from the quicksand, no problem. The Waiting Step Boots honestly aren't used that much in this, but that's okay. This is one of the few times they are. And we can use that to get our next Jiggy! That's the sixth Jiggy of the world. That's what we're lucky seven now. <laughs> I love how the, uh, the the weird green like monster living in the quicksand is like <laughs> stones love them yum <laughs> Ugh, rubber boots I can't eat those <laughs> he's very picky maybe he has a rubber allergy so we're actually we're making really good progress for this world. Not a whole lot left to explore. One thing I am going to explore, though. This area over here. I've, I've avoided coming here for a reason. I wanted to wait till I got the grip grab before coming here because you can't do anything. Alright. So this door is closed. Go Golden Goliath cannot kick it open. Excuse me. Golden Goliath cannot kick it open. However, we can shoot eggs into these snake heads. So those two we can do normally, but we're going to need egg aiming for the other two. Oops, did I see two? I meant four. Because there are six snake heads that we need to have to Bada beam! Snakes are happy, so they let us into their house. What's going on in here? So remember when we did Jiggy Wiggy's challenge and it showed us the world? This is the room that it showed. The treasure chamber. What's up with you? It's terrible. I can't find Target Sand's favorite priceless relic thingy. I think it may have been stolen. Tough luck. We don't care. <laughs> wow. Help Chief Blotagazin find it, and I'll reward you with a jiggy. A jiggy? Well, in that case... <laughs> Great. I'll open the other door for you, but please hurry. Ooh, Geopage up there. And a special door opened. Yeah, so yeah, so when we did Jiggy Wiggy's challenge, it showed us basically the picture of him digging through all the gold. The Jiggy Wiggy challenges will show you a random scene from the world that you go into, which is kind of cool. So we can Talon Trot up here, get ourselves a hollow honeycomb piece. That gold pot, wow, so much gold I can't even Talon Trot up it. That's how you know you're rich. This is a cool looking area though. If you go up here, you can high jump up to this little ledge here, and grip grab a clock across it. Snap dragon, gotta get rid of him. This is why I waited to get in the grip grab, because you can't go up this room without it. And I didn't, I wanted to minimize back dragon, so we got a shock jump disc here. Haboom! Didn't look like there was anything, but there was actually a 
little thing we can grab up over here. So now we're at the top of the pile of gold that we could not scale. Ooh, this is a pretty room. I love the ceiling. This looks like a really royal room. So now we can climb up here. This nice torch-lit stairway. We can take a left up here. Secret room. With a shock jump disc and... Kaboin! This will take us up to the top so we can collect the Cheeto page. We now have four Cheeto pages. Sweet. Back to the treasure room. So now if we go to objects and items, it'll show us we have two hollow honeycomb pieces and four Cheeto pages. And if you have any Globos you haven't uh, given out yet, it'll show those as well. As you can see, Jinjos. We've now collected more. And then viewing totals. We have six out of ten Jiggies, all 100 notes. Two out of three hollow honeycomb pieces, three out of three Cheeto pages. Two out of two Globos, three out of five Jinjos. And then we've only have gotten two out of the three Jam Jar Silos. So viewing totals is actually very nice to do. Especially because, again, you'll be coming back to these worlds generally more than once. But if we go up here, we can push this switch, which will open this gate. And I mentioned earlier that the worlds are interconnected with each other. Well, we're about to see that. This is going to take us to Unga Bunga's Cave. So right now, we are in World 5. World 5 is a prehistoric world. And we are in here linking from World 1. Granted, we can barely explore anything in this world, because most of it's walled off. But it's still really cool how you can, like, explore parts of the world, like, earlier than usual. Caveman's there. Let's, let's see how much we can explore, yeah. So this is, this leads to the rest of the world, basically, but there's a gate blocking it that we cannot get through. Still, we can explore a little bit of World 5. We can high jump up here. Maybe this will lead somewhere. So you see that beehive, how it has red eyes? This is basically Banjo-Tooie's answer to the beehives that were surrounded by bees in the first game. This beehive will actively try to kill us. I recommend Rat-a-Tat wrapping it to insta-kill it, and then you can pick up its honey. So these are the split-up pads that Jam Jars mentioned in the, uh, one of the first episodes that was underneath, like, an eggshell. This is what they look like, but we can't use them yet. This is a weird windy corridor that leads to a stone egg. Okay, then. Can't do anything with that yet. Ah! He's back! Zootaloost! I don't taste good. Whoa, we can fall down here. It's a jam jar silo, but he wants 420 notes, and we only have 100. This is really one of the only location situations in the game where, like the notes actually do play a role. It's so you don't end up getting this move way earlier than you are supposed to. It ain't happening, lady. You need to get rid of Lardy Boy before you can learn this one. Fair enough. Also, we need 420 notes. Ah! A dinosaur? What are you doing here? I told you it's a prehistoric world. The dinosaur is just like, ah. Yeah, we're, we ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> well, we actually are supposed to be here, but we can only explore this tiny portion of the world. But I, I love how Banjo-Tooie's worlds are interconnected. They're interconnected in some really cool ways that we're going to see as the game progresses. And it just, it makes the whole game feel cohesive. Like, the worlds in the first game were totally separate and isolated, and it felt like they barely even exist. Kind of like Mario 64, it's just like, oh, there's a tiny part of Grunty's Lair that teleports you to this mystical world. Whereas this, all of the worlds in the game are in the ILO Hags, so it really does make it feel like it's one world, just with different parts, which is very cool. So, here's Ungabunga. He heard us snap the twig, oh no! Huh? Get out Unga's cave! Okay. So then he kicks us out back to the treasure room, but we can just go right back in, and he's already fallen asleep again. Because Unga Bunga's stupid. So, 
Similarly to what we did in the Jade Snake Grove, what the game wants you to do is just walk ever so quietly across here. Although this is another one that I was able to sequence break. Like I was able to get, I couldn't figure out the Jade Snake one for the longest time. I actually got this Jiggy relatively early on, but I cheesed it. Doggone it, really? I didn't, I barely even touched the stick. Oh, get out on this cave. Man, that is annoying. I was actually, I was able to, as a child to find a way across that without walking slowly. I'll actually, I'll try to show it off. Cause you guys, you guys know what you have to do. You just walk ever so quietly across. So what I did, so all of these red sticks here, all of the red sticks, these are the ones you can't touch. Well, what you can do, you can do a jump followed by a hover to that platform, go around the fire, and then do a jump hover uh, across to Unga. It's very interesting. I felt like this, they, we already did this puzzle once before though. Darn it. It's tougher than it looks. Maybe you have to do a, well no, you can't high jump into a hover. And the high jump is not good enough to get you across. All right, I, I swear I was able to do it. I was able to do it. It took me a lot of tries though. So I guess we'll just, we'll do it the way the developers intended. We're gonna walk quietly and hopefully the game won't cheese us and wake him up for no reason. All right. I'm barely pushing the stick. I'm barely pushing the stick. We can walk a lot silently, but we can be as loud as we want. Hey, Anga Bonga! Did you know that bricks are on sale at the children's toy store? They're really cool. Also, cavemen suck. But at least they are smart enough to get auto insurance at Geico. And now we've gotten Target Sand's Priceless Relic Feeny, which we can pick up and carry it through this tunnel. It sure was convenient of Unga Bunga to make a tunnel for, that we can carry this out of. I don't know why they wanted Target Sand's Priceless Relic Feeny, but okay. Take the long way around. That drops us. <sighs> camera. Okay, thank you. It is a 3D platformer, so the camera's still bad. So we're back in the main room again. The place we fell out of is too high in order to jump into, so we can go for this tarp, which is where we came from. There's this beautiful golden light reflecting off of all of his gold <laughs> that guides us back to the treasure room. And now we don't have to carry it for some reason. Banjo's like, wait, I have a backpack. But Banjo, I'm in the backpack. <laughs> Just deal with it, Kazooie. <laughs> Sorry about that. You found Target Sand's priceless relic, Feeny! The caveman stole it. Why, those thieving little... Careful, this is a family game. Oh yes, so it is. Uh, why don't I just uh, give you a jiggy? That makes sense to me. <laughs> Banjo and Kazooie are way more snarky and like... <laughs> just kind of done with things in this game. <laughs> Then he wakes up. Hey, Pebble God! Me and much trouble, big beatings. You thought that was a pebble? That was definitely, uh, that was definitely a Target Sand Priceless Relic Feeny. <laughs> but he's inventing a new dance craze while he does it, so I think he'll be okay. Kids stealing is wrong. He's just so excited that he got Target Sand's Priceless Relic Feeny back. Maybe Target Sand is like, you don't want to anger Target Sand. Actually, you probably don't. Give me that Jiggy. Yeah, that was a lot of work to get one Jiggy. So there are three more Jiggies in this world. One of them is on the pillar that we can't reach, but the other two we can reach. Thank you.